On today's Locked On Angels, there's a brand new book coming out about Shohei Otani. So let's talk to the author, OC Register writer and author now, Jeff Fletcher is here to talk all about Shohei. That's right now on Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Locked On Angels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Steve Granato. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can follow me on Twitter at Steve Granato and, of course, at Locked On Angels is our main account. Today, Jeff Fletcher, you may know him, great writer for the OC Register, has been covering the Halos for years, has been covering baseball for 25 years now. Um, he is writing a new book, so we had a chance to sit down and chat with him. It's all about Shohei Otani, so this is going to be another show. Shohei Otani episode. So let's just go ahead and buckle up, get ready for that. He details out some of the upbringings of Shohei in his Japan days, um, gives us some cool little nuggets, and then tells you all about uh, his writing process. Really great uh, conversation we have. So let's jump right to it. This is Jeff Fletcher, the new author of a Shohei Otani book. Jeff, appreciate you stepping aside here today, man, and chatting about your book. Uh, you know Jeff Fletcher's work from the OC Register, of course, and the book is Showtime, the inside story of Shohei Otani and the greatest baseball season ever played. Pre-orders available now. Jeff, how you doing today, man? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. Just trying to weed through all the lockout news. I think that's, <laughs> or lack there. At least there is lockout news now, so I think that's, yes, that's at a least good there's... thing that we're actually getting some signs of something happening, so. Yeah, something. Something is better than nothing. Um, nice. I wanted to start with this. Uh, so the book comes out this July. Um, and when when did you start writing this thing? Well, there's two answers to that question. I started writing it in uh, May of 2018 uh, when Otani was first a you know, sensational rookie. And then he got injured in June. And the publisher at the time scrapped the project. They were not interested in the two-way story anymore because he was not a pitcher. Um, I think it still would have been a good book, but the publisher changed their minds. So then uh, they said they might come back to me, you know, later on and, and we would finish it. And uh, so 2021 comes around and Otani is all of a sudden having a great season again. And now there is interest in the book. And uh, this time I got an agent and uh, he worked with uh, several different publishers and we eventually found one that, that uh, we reached an agreement with in October. So I pretty much wrote the whole book from, well, I started, I wrote part of it in 2018 before he got hurt. And then I wrote uh, the vast majority of it just from like uh, November 1st to January 1st, pretty much. That's what I was going to say. I was like, if you had been writing this beforehand, like there's a very different Shohei Otani, uh, or at least uh, success wise, there's a very different Shohei Otani from now as opposed to a year or two ago. Um, but you you kind of go into some of the upbringings with Shohei in Japan. What, what was something that kind of stood out to you the most when you're researching that kind of stuff? Well, I think that what you was really interesting about about Otani is that he's just always been super focused on just baseball and he was not really interested in other things. And, uh, you know, I think he, he made this list when he was, uh, probably before he was even in high school, about like his goals for life and they were all just baseball related. And, uh, and then when he got in high school, he made this whole separate list of his baseball goals and he had like what year he's going to play in the major leagues and what year he's going to pitch his first no hitter and blah, 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 and all the way through. And it's just really, you know, he was just super uh, focused on baseball his whole life. And I think that's the only way you could get through to, to do what he's done. How, how accurate was that list? <laughs> uh, not too accurate. Uh, he was pretty <laughs> optimistic. Uh, I think at the time he was still thought he was going to skip playing professionally in Japan and go right to the major leagues. So he had, uh, and at that time, he also just considered himself a pitcher. So, you know, he uh, just talked about pitching things and, and he was, you know, in the major leagues, like at age 21, I believe, is the way he had worked it out. So he still ended up doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Um, you've, you've been able to cover him now for the last couple of years. You've been covering baseball for the better part of 25 years now. Um, so when, when you're looking 
at Shohei. Um, you know, and we we can all marvel at him um, a million times over. But what's like the one thing that's really standing out about him as opposed to other other players that you've covered? Aside from the I mean, obvious, aside from the fact that he's a two way player, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, like character wise, yeah. makeup wise, like what is it about him that makes him so successful? I mean, I think that it's. I think first of all, he is like incredible talent, and uh, I think that the other thing is that he's got this great ability to adjust and to improve himself, and that's you know just work ethic and his aptitude and his mental skills for the game. I mean, you look at spring training of 2018 and I don't think anybody could have looked at that and really felt too excited about what he was going to do in the major leagues initially, that they thought, you know, he wasn't ready, but all of a sudden he tweaked a couple things and changed his batting stance a little bit and boom, he comes out and he was great. Um, You know, you look at the way he played last year uh, in 2020, I should say, and uh, it, it didn't look very good either, but he spent the winter, he fixed some things. He, Changed his uh, batting stance a little bit, changed, you know, the way he pitched a little bit, changed his training, and all of a sudden he came out and he was incredible. And even within the 2021 season, if you look at the way he started, you know, as a pitcher in April, he was still walking everybody. So people were excited, you know, oh, yeah, he's throwing 101 and he's he's not hurt and he's striking a lot of guys out, but he still was not a complete pitcher because of all the walks and hit batters and that kind of thing. But he made some tweaks and then he – took off and he I think he walked like nine batters per nine innings in the first month and like two batters per nine innings the rest of the season so that's pretty good that's more than just talent that's that's a pretty high uh, baseball IQ to be able to make those adjustments it's the new year so that means new year's resolutions and if yours is about getting fit or eating healthier you should include built bar in your plan built bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good you'll actually want to eat it unlike those other gross chalky protein bars that you've had before here's an idea for you go to all your secret treat stashes at home in the pantry at the office in the car throw out all those sugary filled treats and replace them with built bars so when you're craving a savory delicious treat or a sweet treat you grab a built bar. It's healthier. It's better for you, and it tastes incredible. Most protein bars, uh, most built bars rather, contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. I got a promo code for you. You know I do. I always do. Built.com. Use the promo code Locked15 and get 15% off your order. Again, that's Built.com. Locked15 for 15% off. So let's let's go back a little bit. Um, you mentioned you started writing this a little bit in 2018. Uh, what was it like? I'm, I'm trying to like put my mindset back in 2018 as well because it's so hard to look at Shohei in that scope again. You mentioned that you know some of the numbers weren't good and some of the you know that spring training, especially that the conversation around that was all miners, miners, miners. Just send them there. Um, do you think that in 2018 the Angels front office kind of saw? already that like no minors isn't it or or was it not a fluke but just how did that all come about do you think from your perspective well that is one thing that i that i do point out in the book is that the angels never had any doubt you know it, even no matter all of 2018 spring training when you talk to mike Socher, billy epler and all of us in the media wanted to, to get them to say you know are you sure he's ready and even privately off the record they go no trust us he's fine He's going to be fine. Look at what he did in the, in Japan, which is a very high level of baseball. And he did it for five years. Don't worry about it. And they were right. So uh, I think that that's, you know, it's a testament to them. And uh, certainly it would have been easy for them to put him in the minor leagues. They could have gotten some financial benefit out of it. They could have, you know, kept an extra year of him, you know, control of him if they would have started him in the minor leagues. But they were like, no, this guy's ready to play in the major leagues. I don't care what he did in Arizona. He's ready. You'll see. And they were right. So heading into 2021, I I think some of the sentiment around Shohei, at least for me personally, was kind of a prove it kind of year was like, all right, man, you're healthy, free range, go out and do it. Thinking back about a year now, the Jeff Fletcher of 2021, could you have ever envisioned 2021 going the way that it did? No, probably not. Uh, 
because it just, you know, he hadn't done it. You know, there was basically two and a half years of him not doing it. And uh, it was always in there. I mean, the, the one thing that that you could cling to was the fact that when he was healthy and playing both ways, the start of 2018, he was great. And since then, he had not really been healthy and had the opportunity to do it. So that was still sort of the hope that he said, like, well, we haven't really seen him have a chance since then. But I mean, part of the fact that because he hasn't had the chance was the way you couldn't really be sure that he was going to do it. So, you know, I thought maybe he's going to be a terrible pitcher, but he'll be a good hitter. And maybe they'll just stop having a pitch. Or maybe he's going to get hurt again as a pitcher. Or maybe he's going to be a good pitcher and be not a very good hitter. Because in 2020, remember, he wasn't a very good hitter either. So you just didn't know. It was just a huge range of, of outcomes. And uh, I do think, though, that in spring training, I think we got a pretty good idea that it was going to be towards the better part of the outcomes. It's still, you know, by the time we got to opening day, I think we still had some, we already had some pretty good evidence, even before the first game of the season, that it was going to be good because of what he had done in spring training. But before spring training, you know, as we're sitting here, you know, the end of January, the beginning of February, 2021, I don't think anybody really could have expected this. As a beat writer, you obviously have access to players and coaches, all that kind of stuff. Obviously the pandemic has also thrown a wrench in that system, doing zoom stuff and all that. But how much were you able to kind of get inside the mind of Shohei while you're writing this? Uh, unfortunately, not very much. Uh, I didn't, uh, I really had to rely on the, the interviews I'd done with him just during his regular playing time with the angels. Um, and he doesn't really show you too much of himself in those interviews. He, he keeps it pretty short. Uh, so I just talked to a lot of people around him, but uh, I think that, you know, the more you learn about him, the more you uh, learn that it is just what you think that he's just a guy that is just a hundred percent focused on baseball. And that's how he's gotten to be where he is. And, and I don't think there's any big secret extra part of him that uh, is totally different from what we see. I mean, maybe somebody will play this back in three years and we'll find out I was totally wrong. But uh, uh, right now, I think that he is pretty much what we think is he's a guy who's, who's so focused on baseball and that's what he wants to do. And that's how he's gotten to be as good as he is. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march through the NFL playoffs. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year, and you know they got a new updated desktop and mobile website. Go there and sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code LOCKED ON to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, all the way to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. You, you again, as you meant, as I mentioned, you beat writing, so you get to be around him a lot. Um, what is something about Shohei that makes him the leader? I know there was that whole discussion, right? The whole, the, the whole Stephen A. Smith stuff, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to get into that, but what what is it about him that's been like the leadership quality? Even though he does does have the language barrier thing, and you know how how has he been able to, from your eyes, kind of bring the Angels together as a team? Well, I'm not sure that there's really anything that he does leadership wise. I think what he does is just his performance. I think that's the best thing the angels get from him. Uh, you know, like I said, I haven't been in the clubhouse in a while, but I don't get the sense that he's calling team meetings or anything like that. You know, uh, I think that he's friendly with all of his teammates and they all get along with him and they all love watching him perform and his performance certainly helps and, uh, they get along with each other. There's a lot of camaraderie, but, uh, I don't really feel like there's a probably a big real leadership as we normally would define it element uh, of him. 2022, big question. If there is one, there should be. Uh, but when we get to 2022, uh, when whenever that is, can he keep it up? I, I know that there's still some doubts. Uh, can he repeat 2021 from your perspective? 
I have no idea. Uh, I would love <laughs> to believe he can. That'd be great. I think that one interesting thing is, uh, you know, when he came into to 2021, everybody doubted that he could do this just because he hadn't done it. And so now I think there's a lot of people after 2021 that go, oh, well, now he can do it. So now he's going to do it again. You know, it's, you know, it's obviously not that easy. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And for all the talent he has and for all the work he puts into it, it's still things can go wrong. So I don't think anybody should take for granted what he did in 2021 and, you know, expect that. Uh, if he approaches that again in 22, that would be great. And I think everybody should celebrate it just as much and not, you know, I think with Mike Trout, sometimes people kind of get like, oh, yeah, Mike Trout, he's great. He puts up these great years, yada, yada, yada. But I don't think if Otani puts up more 2021s, 20, I don't think anybody should take it for granted. And, and he should just keep winning the MVP every year if he's going to do that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if he, uh, I, I think all Angels fans obviously rooting for him. I think all baseball is rooting for him too. He just seems to be like one of those lovable characters. Uh, you know, if you're writing a story about the whole baseball as a whole, I think everyone's just kind of on Shohei's side unless you're playing against him. Um, but the book again, Showtime, the inside story of Shohei Otani, the greatest baseball season ever played available. Now, uh, I'll leave a link in the episode description. Uh, Jeff, your final pitch. Why should people pick this book up? Well, I think that one of the things that I hope to capture with this book was that, uh, you know, Otani was kind of, you know, quote unquote, the Babe Ruth of Japan and everybody talked about him doing this when he got here. But there was a lot of up and down in between when, you know, he pulled on an Angels cap in December 2017 and when he had the 2021 season that was as incredible as it was. And there were all these different points in the story when it looked like, oh, he's going to be great. Oh, no, he's going to be terrible. Oh, he's going to be hurt. Oh, no, he's okay. And uh, I think it was quite a roller coaster. And uh, I hope that people, you know, are kind of reminded of what that was like and, you know, how difficult it was for him to get to where he was. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Again, pre-orders link in the episode description. Jeff Fletcher, thanks so much. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. I want to send my thanks again out to Jeff Fletcher, OC Register Writer. And of course, the book about Shohei is in the episode description. You can click it right now and pre-order it. Going to be a great read. Uh, Jeff's a great writer and has been doing it for years. I'm very excited uh, to check out this new book coming out. Uh, I want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis from Lee Sterling. Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on Locked On Angels. We're going to take the weekend off. We will talk to you on Monday. Make sure to shoot me a tweet at Locked On Angels. And of course, hit a subscribe here on our YouTube channel. We are so close to 1,000 subscribers. That is our goal right now. All right, guys, we will talk to you in a couple days. I'm Steve Granato. Later. Later.